Um, I'm Parker Wigginson, and this is my what I believe in my presentation, and I based it on the purpose of life. Um, many people in their lives have asked the questions: Does life really matter? Is there meaning to all of this? Is there a God? After all, all we do is live, work, and then die without any purpose. We are just another body in a graveyard, gone. Nothing but a carcass six feet underground, with nothing. Never to be seen or heard from again. But wait, before you walk away discouraged and hopeless, I have some good news. The good news. The gospel. First of all, we should not just be living to live, but living as servants to each other and to God. Matthew 23, 11 says, The greatest among you shall be your servant. And 1 Corinthians 4.1 says, This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. We should be living for Christ and not for ourselves. 1 Corinthians 4.18 says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This life is only here for but a moment. And the reality we live in today is nothing in the eyes of God. 2 Peter 3 8 says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. We as Christians should be in the world, but not of the world. Romans 12 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. God promises that he would destroy this world and everything it craves. Revelation 21.1 Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Satan is depicted as the prince of this world. So why is it that people, even Christians, hold on to the things of this world? Why do we like the things of this world when Satan is the prince of them? I succumb to these temptations just like anyone else. I'm not perfect and desire the things of this world, but every time I get off track, God's word nudges me back onto the right path. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. I am looking forward to the end of this evil and sinful world, and I have only been here for 15 years, and I'm tired of it. I long for the day when I can see my Savior face to face and not have to worry about the things of this world anymore. Revelation 21, 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Uh, Earth, on the other hand, will not be so lucky. God is going to pour out his wrath over the entire world, and none can escape that is still here. But we as Christians should be looking toward, uh, for, uh, we'll, we, but we as Christians will not be here to experience the wrath of God. Romans 5, 9 says, Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? And questions may arise. How? How will he save us from God's wrath? And since the whole world will be judged, where will he take us? Well, let's answer the latter. John 14, 1 through 4 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you, uh, what I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. He's going to prepare a place in his Father's house for us. His Father is God, and God is in heaven. And so, he's going to take us to heaven. That sounds pretty safe to me. Pretty safe to me. Now let's answer the former. How? How will we get to heaven? 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, The Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will, we, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The phrase caught up was taken from the Greek verb harpazo, 
meaning to seize upon, spoil, snatch away, or to take to oneself, especially the use of rapture. Jesus is going to rapture us up into heaven to be with him forever. But sadly, most pastors today don't share or preach on this subject. They avoid it because it's too controversial. Luke 12, 51, Jesus says, Do you think I came to bring peace? No, I tell you, but division. Maybe pastors are afraid they'll lose some of their congregation, or they say, oh, I don't want to ruffle feathers. Ruffle feathers! Oh, I don't want to rock the boat. Rock the boat! Who cares if they're offended? They need to hear the truth. 2 Timothy 4.3 says, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. And that's pretty self-explanatory. They don't want to hear the truth, so they get people to tell them what they want to hear. And right now, that sums up the majority of the pastors and teachers. Matthew 11, 16-17 says, To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces, calling out to others. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. The pipe and the dirge are the gospel. The unresponsive crowd is the world. Either you are telling others the entire gospel, or you need the entire gospel to be told to you. And personally, I want to be the one sharing the, God, the good news. And not just part of it, but all of it. Even if it does bring division or rock the boat a little. In conclusion, life is not meaningless. It is an opportunity to serve Christ. It is an opportunity to serve others. It is an opportunity to praise the Lord. It is an opportunity to glorify God. And it is an opportunity to bring others to love Christ. It is also longing, waiting, hoping, and praying for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus.